Well, look, guys, let, let's let's simplify this. Let's make this a little more casual, uh, and hopefully we can regain a little bit more time from the university here, since I know you guys waited a long time for this tonight. Uh, and, and just make it a little bit more casual, because, again, uh, nobody likes speeches, right? Um, we're facing a big problem today, right? Uh, we have powerful political forces that are asking for more and more power, more and more authority. Uh, they say we're facing a time of extraordinary threat. There are now lone individuals, uh, these kind of super criminals, right, like terrorists, uh, spies, and things like that, uh, who are totally capable of destabilizing uh, our entire societies, uh, ending our governments, collapsing our states. Now, there's no real evidence that that's actually the case, uh, but the politics of this fear uh, have really reshaped the way that our laws are being passed. So we have to figure out how do we maintain a free society in the context of an unlimited government? Uh, this we've seen in Canada through bills such as C-51 and so on and so forth. Uh, the United States, uh, of course, we had the birth of mass surveillance uh, on a truly global scale. Uh, the UK is now passing what they call the Investigatory Powers Bill, which is really an unrestrained uh, and unprecedented intrusion into the private lives of every citizen, not only uh, in their country, but everywhere else. Uh, when, we, when the government is presuming a trust in the propriety of their actions that no longer exists, this story about the Montreal police uh, spying on a journalist through their phone uh, in a very intense way for the particular reason, a specified reason, of uncovering the sources behind their journalism uh, is a radical attack on the operations of the free press. Uh, and speaking as uh, one of the directors of the Freedom of the Press Foundation, uh, this unsettles me not only on a personal level, uh, but I think is something that actually represents a threat to the traditional model of our democracy. Can we recognize, or at least debate in a reasoned way, a new idea which is somewhat radical, which is that law is beginning to fail as a guarantor of our rights. It is the lowest bar uh, protecting the way we operate, the interact, interact with one another, because government has built in uh, so many mechanisms to get around these things, uh, these restrictions, when it wants to, that now the local police can decide that they don't like a journalist's reporting. They can go to a justice of the peace, and the justice of the peace will quite happily say, okay, that sounds great. Look at the GPS on his phone. Figure out everywhere he's traveling. Figure out everyone he's communicating with. No, you can't actually read his emails. No, you can't actually listen to his calls. But you can find out everyone he met with, who he called, how long he was on the call with. Uh, and from this, derive uh, an extraordinary understanding of how this individual works. And it wasn't just one. It's now expanding. We're hearing six, maybe possibly more. And rather than the police chief, saying, all right, this was clearly something that went too far, and regardless of whether or not I authorized this operation, I recognize that to restore trust, uh, I need to reestablish the basis of accountability, that accountability that is lost when our operations become secret. And for that reason, I have chosen to resign. Uh, we don't see the mayor calling for that. We don't see the local premier calling for that. And it's this question, this dynamic, where our governments are increasingly invested with extraordinary capabilities to peer into all of our private lives uh, with very little interference. Whereas we, the public, can know almost nothing about how they operate. This inverts the traditional dynamic of private citizens and public officials into this brave new world we're facing of private officials and public citizens.